CO2 levels are peaking in the atmosphere. Ices are melting. Extreme weather conditions are occurring. Species are being extinct, and ecological systems are being interrupted in ways we cannot predict. Climate change is a reality. As mentioned before, in 2015, the UN, together with more than 190 countries, agreed and committed on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. It is an agenda for shared prosperity, peace, and partnership, and it conveys the urgency of climate action, rooted in gender equality and respect. Of the rights of all, and above all, it pledges to leave no one behind. And sustainable development goal number seven: to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. It has a major impact on almost all of the other goals. That is a huge responsibility and possibility. But when asking audiences, maybe not like this, but other audiences around the world and people, your friends and family, what are those sustainable energies? Do you know what they say? This is not a scientific study. They usually say solar first. After a while, they say, "Wind." And when they've been doing some thinking, they say, "Hydro." And then, when thinking some more, they say, "Because they are really enlightened people." Oh yes, but we have to add storage because now we know that solar and wind they are intermittent. They only work when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing. This is not a bad picture. I like this picture, but I want to change it. There are too few sustainable energies in these pictures. The perception that people has on sustainable energies is this, and this is not bad. But we know better, right? I want to add a sustainable baseload. I'm Cecilia Edling, and I'm the founder of HeatPower.com. HeatPower.com. Is an initiative that has to do with communication and marketing when it comes to heat power. Heat power consists of two energy sources: industrial heat power and geothermal heat power. And I am here today because I want to share with you why, how, and what we now need to do to add that sustainable baseload to the picture. To add heat power into people's minds, knowledge, and understanding, so it can land in their hearts, just as it has in mine. So we will start here. This is an average electricity consumption during a day for a person in the world where there is electricity. As said before, one billion people still lack access to electricity. You sleep. You wake up, have some breakfast, go to work, come home, cook food, do laundry, maybe watch some television or something, surf the internet. But where does the electricity come from? This is, of course, a schematic picture, but it shows more than 70 percent comes from coal, oil and gas, and nuclear. And remember the picture I showed before. 16% comes from hydro. That's quite a large amount. 4% comes from wind, and one and a half percent from solar. Isn't that interesting? In 2004, Google started to monitor and display search trends. By then, the solar industry already had been speaking as a category for more than 15 years. They were quite ahead of us, and by that, they also have 
between 15 and 25 times more searches than geothermal power or organic Rankin cycle. If you add wind to this picture, it looks like this. And mind you that wind is twice as much in supply compared to solar. So how did this come about? We have to recap. In 1839, Mr. Becquerel invented the solar cell. It took about 100 years, a little bit more, before the first solar cell was sold commercially. Efficiency came in 1985, and by that, the techniques and processes started to gain, like, went faster. And also, communicators like myself, marketeers, they saw, ah, oh, window of opportunity. We have to speak about this. This is great. This is news. What you see here our abbreviations, wordings, terminology, and processes used within the solar industry. They decided we are not going to use them in our public window because they are too hard. We need to find the common denominator. What is the common denominator? Energy from the sun, solar power. The solar industry, they have been communicated as a category for 30 to 40 years, and they have done it well. I am so impressed. And they are not our, they're not our enemy, they're our friend, and we can learn from them. But one might think, okay, so they have between 75 and 90% of the communication in the media space, but they only have one and a half percent in supply. Yes, but it's paying off now. These articles are taken from the last month only, from markets that are large. You were mentioning China, China and India. These are large numbers, and they are worth it. But what can we do? And they're also talking, it's the solar leads, it's solar industry. It's not even the companies. So with this said, I want to give you my electricity forecast, my energy forecast for the future, because I think we can do something here if we communicate differently than what we've done up until today. <clears throat> Predictions are that up until 2040, the energy demand will grow by 30%. And I may also remind you that 70% today comes from oil, coal, and gas, and nuclear. So this is 30% up. I do think solar will have their fair share, uh, together with storage. We will have more wind, have some tidal, and maybe some biomass as well. But there is still a void for about 50% of the demand. And of course, there are predictions that we will continue to use fossil fuels for a long time, but I don't think we have to. I believe in you. But, if we fill that gap, like this, risks are we will fail. If we communicate small, complicated parts, we will be small, complicated parts. Government and politicians, the public, media, journalists, they will not understand what we are talking about. We will not convince them, we will confuse them. So, I think we need to find our common denominator. Because if we use our common denominator, one plus one can become three, or even five, or ten. I call for heat power. So, to conclude this, why should we act like a larger category and not talk organic Rankine cycle, flue gases and binary plants and cycles and all this 
It's really nice technology, and I trust you with it, but we need to communicate otherwise. Because if we don't, we will get no attention, no understanding or knowledge, no PR, no policies and laws or subsidies supporting us in the way that we deserve. We will get less business, less possibility to reach SDG number seven, and a larger threat to the planet. What we need to do is to find that and use our common denominator. But we also need to find other ter terminologies within our, within our industry and create that industry, have a brand platform for our category, heat power. And how do we do it? We need to be really, really brave. Honest, transparent, speak to each other about our real problems and our real pros possibilities. Meet, speak, do it together, and sharing is caring. I want to finish off with doing what I'm saying. I'm giving you my hand. I'm reaching it out. Please, let's do this together, because we can make a real difference in the world. We can reach SDG number seven together. And I also want to give you something. Last week, heatpower.com released a film on geothermal heat power. It is not mine, it is ours. If you want to use it, I will give it to you. You can put your logo on it, and you can use it the way you want to. Enjoy. Earth, a little place we call home. Filled with life, power, and energy. Although strong, our planet is also fragile, and as of right now, suffering. We consume a massive amount of energy on a daily basis, and as our population grows, so will our energy usage. Fortunately, we can make a difference. And this change has already begun. But we still have a long way to go. We need to stop using fossil fuels and nuclear energy to go from brown to green. To do that, we need more renewable energy sources that continuously produce electricity regardless of sun or wind, at night or day. The answer lies beneath our feet. At the core of the Earth, there's a renewable energy source, a heat power. Geothermal heat power can provide large cities as well as rural areas with clean electricity, and it can be found anywhere on the planet at any time. Heat power utilizes already existing heat sources, and by adding it to the future energy mix, we get a 100% green and stable energy source. It is up to us to take care of the only place we've ever known as home. Thank you.